Let's talk about iterator pattern. The design pattern, iterator. If you've come across design patterns, you've likely come across the iterator pattern. The iterator pattern is a way of separating the algorithm from the container. And in this case, the algorithm could refer to, for example, a search algorithm, and the container could be a list or an array or a linked list, etc. To be honest, I feel this sounds kind of sort of esoteric and difficult to understand why it would be useful. So let's talk about a more, let's say, simple example. I came across this example some years ago and honestly I can't remember whether it was actually directly in relation to iterator pattern. And honestly I can't either remember where it is actually from. So if you recognize this example, please do shoot a link in the comments and I apologize to the authors for not referring. But consider the following. Say that we're building some kind of banking system and that in our banking system we have an account class. So it's an oversimplified example, but assume that we in this account class have a collection that contains deposits. Again, it's oversimplified because in a real world scenario you would of course probably use some kind of object to represent a deposit, but in this case we're just going to use a primitive. So say that deposits are represented by numbers, in other words, the amount actually deposited. Okay, further assume that we then want to use this account in the following way. From the outside, for some reason, we want to be able to iterate over all of the deposits and then, it's irrelevant to this example, but do something with them, say, print them. But the key point is that we want to do something which is non-mutating. We simply want to use uh, these deposits, but we don't want to change the deposits within the account. So in order to get access to these deposits from the outside, we need to somehow expose the list out of the account. And this is the happy moment when we realize that in languages such as C-sharp, we have members that can be publicly gettable but privately settable. So it feels like a perfect such scenario, so we would simply then mark the list to have a public getter and a private setter. Fine and dandy, we call it a day, and as the story goes, this is of course super hypothetical, while we go home and sleep carefully in the night, we wake up the next morning and the system is hacked. The problem with this code is actually very simple. The problem is that in languages such as C-sharp or Java or JavaScript, arrays are passed around using their references, not using their values, the values they contain. So in other words, we are not passing around the contents of the array, we are passing around a reference to the actual array. So the problem is mutability. Let's understand why this is hackable. If we are passing around the array by reference and not by value, that means that whenever the program or whoever was uh, accessing the array or a uh, list of deposits, as soon as that user gets a hold of the array, if the user changes the contents of the array, then that won't just change the user's copy, that will actually change the array within the account. So it's a classic case of the problem of mutability. While you are thinking that you are only mutating your copy, you are actually changing the contents of the account. Or you are changing the contents of the list of deposits within the account instance. So let's get back to the iterator pattern. How could the iterator pattern help in this case? Well, the iterator pattern hides the underlying collection from whoever is using the collection which is exactly the scenario. So if instead of in our account class, we would make the list of deposits publicly gettable, we could simply implement some kind of iterator pattern, which in c .net would be the ienumerable interface. This would mean that from the outside, instead of grabbing out the collection and then using that collection in, for example, the for each, we could now simply iterate over the actual account. We simply pass the account to the for each, and then in each iteration, we will have access to one of the primitives representing one of the deposits. All right, let's wrap this up. There are many, many more ways of using the iterator pattern, and this is just one. But I think it's important to understand that some of the sort of schoolbook examples that you get when you're learning iterator pattern is not necessarily at all all of the cases for the iterator pattern. Again, it might feel as an esoteric pattern that you would hardly ever use, 
but it's actually highly usable and highly useful in some scenarios. All right, that is it. If you have any questions, comments, or angry outrages, as usual, do hit them up in the comments. And if you want more code talks like this, be sure to subscribe.